Welcome to Season 8, Episode 33 of the Ubuntu Podcast. It's Thursday, the 22nd of October, and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and the community. I'm Mark, and joining me this week are Alan. Hello, hello. Laura. Hiya. And Martin. Hello. Oh, so here we are at last. Yes. Colonel uh, Bugs yeah. notwithstanding. Yes. <laughs> big big yeah. thank you this week to community hero Joe Ressington for helping us work out why Laura's audio wasn't working. Yep. It My was the Colonel. Was. Which is why we're recording on a different day. Yes. Yes. However, uh, because Thanks, we're two Joe. days later, we've managed to accrue a bumper amount of news. So I think we should probably crack on with the show and get through it Good idea. as much as we can. Yeah. So first up in the news, uh, in recent days, there have been reports that people's systems are not merely downloading the new Windows 10 installer, but actually starting it up as well. And I assume we're talking about people who are running Windows, not <laughs> people who are running OS 10 or Linux. Suddenly their machine starts installing Windows 10. That would be, That'd be creepy. Frightful. Yeah. No, uh, this is that's... for people running Windows 7 and uh, and Windows 8. Previously, they would get a little pop-up and it would say, hey, you you should really get Windows 10. You should really do that now. And there's been a few reports of machines just magically upgrading themselves. <laughs> is Windows 10 upgrade free? Uh, well, see, the thing is, when the little pop-up came up some weeks ago, you could press a button and say, yeah, I'd, I'll opt in for that. I'll have that when, when that comes out. But you know, thinking there'll be a pop-up later that says, hey, that thing you opted in for, now, now's the time to do it. Um, but instead, for some reason, there's some bug that caused it to just deploy to uh, some people. The first I heard of it was a, there's a very pro journalist, um, Mary Jo Foley, I think her name is. And uh, she, she tweeted about it. It's like, I'm thinking, I'm reconsidering the way I do updates on my system. <laughs> like, hmm, is that the only thing you're reconsidering? Interesting. Cool. Oh, well, what a shame. If only it was open source and somebody could vet the code. Well, indeed. Yeah, because that solved our problem on Tuesday, no one. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody uploaded a malicious app to the Ubuntu Click Store and it got past automated testing. Um, but I believe Alan put his pants on on the outside of his trousers and saved the day. Or oh, if only it was <laughs> open source and someone could have vetted the code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happened yeah, there? that was a fun evening. Yeah. So um, I, just for the record, I didn't save the day. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 it was spotted by one of our um, community members who um, who has a phone and installs at random apps from the store, and somebody put an app in the store called Test. And uh, he downloaded that app, thinking it's gone through our automated testing process, so it should all be fine. Installed it, and it had a button in it that just said, tap me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that rebooted the phone, which is alarming in and of itself. An app shouldn't be able to just reboot the phone, but it did. And then um, I think he noticed that the splash screen had changed on his device. And uh, he posted some photos of that on social media. And a few of us picked up on it, and then a team was mobilised <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to sort out the problem. Which, yeah, that was that was a fun evening because it was found. Well, I saw it at about midnight <sighs> our time, oh, and so God. everyone was up. This the team was up. I mean, there were some people in different time zones, but we were up all night sorting this problem out. So, so do you yeah. know what had allowed them to to do what they did? It was kind of a bundle of bugs oh, right. uh, <laughs> that they'd exploited. Mm -hmm. There was, I think, there was. It, it amounts to three bugs, really. Right. Um, but the the main one that they they managed to exploit was actually getting it in the store in the first place because the checks should have prevented that. Right. Um, and so they 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 managed to hide an app inside an app, basically. Wow. They they hid an app and the. The directory that the hidden app was in wasn't checked by the tools. So, yeah, it's a flaw in the tool that does the checks. And that was the first thing, well, one of the first things we fixed. Um, but, yeah, and then there was other things that allowed it to reboot the phone and allowed it to replace the, the boot splash. So, you know, there's at least three things there. But it was it was quite bizarre that someone would, you know, upload an app that's just called Test and there's no... Yeah, you know, there's no way of knowing who that was because they used a you know, random email address and stuff. Uh. Um, so it's not like they've, I don't know, they haven't 
as far as I know, written like a security paper on it or something, or given a presentation that says, hey, Ubuntu sucks and this is why and I broke it or anything. I don't know. It, and it only affected like 13 people or something. <laughs> well, 15 if you include me and one other canonical guy. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So it was interesting and fun, fun way to spend uh, the evening. Yeah, but <laughs> what's next, Martin? Um, Chrome forty six is going to drop the OK Google extension because nobody actually uses it, although it <laughs> will remain on Chrome OS and Chromebooks. So um, the the first thing that occurs to me about this is I also noticed that um, Chrome OS is going to be dropping its notification center as well because nobody uses it. And I was just thinking to myself, where's all these metrics coming from? You know, uh, 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 when you say I would want to send health usage data to mm-hmm. Google, is this some of the stuff that's being sent through? And it also makes me wonder, are Google becoming more aggressive in what they cut back? And it's not just services now, but product features. And can well, we continue to rely on Google to be there or features of Google products to be there? Well, they've been cutting back on the Android features. There's been things which you, you, you mm. used to be able to do or apps used to be able to do in Android, which in later versions they can't do. Like what? Like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, changing your uh, 3G, 2G network status. You used to be able to do that from an app or a widget. And now, you, unless you root your phone, you can only do that from a um, from like the system settings. Mm. And uh, well, I'm I'm not so. I mean, I can understand how they know whether you're using OK Google or not because your speech gets sent to their back end yeah. and probably has a client ID which knows that that's Chrome 46 or Chrome yeah. 40, whatever. So they know that it's come from a browser and not a mobile client. That, that's yeah. that's okay. I can, I'm I'm okay with them knowing that because they'll have received me saying how to cook beef or you know whatever it is I've barked at my browser that day. I actually, because you know, you can go and listen to all the. We've talked about this before. You can go and listen to everything you've ever said. Really? To, oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. If, if you go to Google dot com slash dashboard, there's a thing in there that shows you know everything you've ever asked <laughs> Google, and all of mine <laughs> are what song is this? It's just me <laughs> saying what song is this, <laughs> and then uh, the kids playing with it and asking it stupid questions. So I've got like little snippets, and you can play it back. <laughs> it tells you the text, and you can press play and hear yourself sounding stupid into a phone. Yeah. Excellent. Mark? Um, The OTA 7 of uh, update of Ubuntu phones is released on Monday the 9th, was released on Monday the 19th of October. Uh, So the features include addition of search functionality to web browser history view, an improved context menu, web browser HTTP basic auth support, uh, support for SVG in the gallery app, scopes, likes and retweets is that a scope for four likes and retweets uh oh, amr codec right, yeah. support i don't know what amr is it's an audio audio format, format. okay it's, uh, mm. yeah and the web browser runs in an app armor container i mean yeah it used to run uh, it used to run unconfined so apps that run unconfined like this dodgy app that got <laughs> into the store last week uh those are if they're unconfined then they're they can they can touch any file on the file system and so we're keen for every single app to be confined so it's siloed and and, and can't touch files it shouldn't be able to touch right. and uh, the web browser has been a, like a legacy for a while has been able has been a debian package installed on the phone and has been unconfined and there's you know, we're trying to get them all confined so every app is siloed cool. so phones people who already have ubuntu phones will be getting this update over the air automatically? They already They've already got it. Yeah. Oh, wow. It, it was phased over 24 hours on Monday. Right. Um, and it's quite funny. You know when you know when you see people moaning that they haven't got their Android update on their phone and they're like, you know, weeks pass. You know, where's my where's my update? And like five hours after we announced OTA 5, there are people going, I still haven't got yes. it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you know, it's phased over 24 hours. So uh, you'll get it within the next, you know, however many hours are left in the day. But yeah. Isn't it nice only it's having fun. two phones to deal with? Uh. <laughs> Well, it's not actually only two phones to deal with because there's the Nexus images as well. Uh, and they all okay. get updated too. Um, mm. And also, you know, the images that as for phones that are yet to be released as well. Yeah. Oh, more about That's that later. Moving on. <laughs> Go on, Alan. Next one. Uh, moving on. Uh, Facebook will start sending notifications to people that it believes have had their accounts hacked by governments. Mm. Um, so is this mm. is this a good thing? Is this security theatre? Well, 
I know. think so. Because what about the accounts that they've been compelled to give our governments access to? Are they going to notify? Oh, that's you not about hacking that? though. That's just them using their uh, well, their backend tools I'd, to give them all of your information. Yeah, that's perfectly I, fine. I think this is a headline to try and lull people into thinking that Facebook are looking out for oh, you. Yeah. When in actual fact, this means nothing, because the actual concern is. A government has approached Facebook and said, we want access to this account and Facebook hand over yes. the goods. And no, you can't tell anyone. Because mm. they couldn't. Mm. If, if I... the US government said they wanted someone's personal information and gave them a national security letter, they couldn't tell you that they'd done that. Mm. Right. But this is more uh, if uh, bad guys are looking. Not the good guys. Oh, right. This is, Sorry. This is Sorry, for this the, is bad the bad guys. guys. Okay. You know, like North Korea. You know, like well, yeah, North Korea, Russians, China, all those bad guys. Over there, <laughs> right. right, not not the nice governments. Not my opinion. <laughs> I was just going to say, not your opinion <laughs> or political. Right, no. Uh, it, and I've, I'm doing air quotes. You can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes every time I say bad guys. But, you know, that that's the goal, isn't it? It's, it's you know, if you're an American citizen and you're walking around and your phone suddenly starts going ping, 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 you know, password resets and stuff – then clearly Facebook can detect this. These these requests are coming from you know an exit node off tour in North Korea or a, you know some machine that's not your desktop and not a machine that you're they're familiar with you ever having logged in from. So it's it's a nice thing to tell you that you know they think you're being attacked. I think I think it's a nice thing. I think more sites should do this if they can. I thought they did anyway. If you if you got a login from somewhere else. Yeah, but it's usually pretty vague and just like, oh, someone tried to log in. Yeah. But I think this is more comprehensive, more like, hang on a minute, there's like a thousand requests per minute for that ID. It's probably being attacked. It's not just someone trying the password speculatively. It's it's more, you know, someone really trying to, you know, hammer the door down of this account, I think is what they're trying to detect it. Mm. Mm. Interesting. But the difference is they're notified. Yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, if we hear about anyone getting these messages, how they decide whether it's a government or just some random bad people. Are they well, the government would tell them, wouldn't they? What? I think that's that's the that's the point. The government would say to them, "We're, we're I hacking." Want, I want that person to say, "No, no." They, they, well, no. If they're doing that, then that's just yeah. They don't like if if the if the government goes to Facebook, if the American government goes to Facebook and say, "We want that person's data," that's not hacking into the account. If it's no, if no, it's no, a, if it's a foreign government, a foreign. I mean, it depends I where you're using Facebook from. If it's any actor, other, yeah, if it's someone trying to break into your account to compromise your data, how are they going to say that's a government agent rather than that's a uh, you know criminal? I think. It, well, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Okay. So the Free Software Foundation have announced the first version of criteria for evaluating services that host free software source code repositories for distribution and collaborative development. What does that mean? No idea. Mm. And does so it mean basi- like standards for things like GitHub? Yeah, that's basically what it is. So now that everyone in the world is using GitHub to host all of the world's open source stuff, a couple of years later, they've decided that now is the time for them to release <laughs> their, their guidelines on ethical source code repositories. Because GitHub itself isn't open source, is it? No. no. And yeah, it wouldn't meet a lot of the, the standards which, uh, which Do they- they've, they've listed. Do they list, um, you know, like how they, they have similar guidelines for like Linux distributions and stuff and they list like FSF approved Linux distributions. Do they list FSF approved hosting providers or anything? Um, I haven't seen such a list. Um, because that would be, you know, that'd be quite a good list yes. to get on if you're someone like, I don't know, GitLab or mm. whoever is the current favorite free software hosting platform. I imagine GNU Savannah will be on there. I mean, Launchpad is what I meant to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I don't think they've got a list at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me, though, if we saw some sort of, um, yeah, approved list arrive. But yeah, point. I agree with you. It is it is a little bit late. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, if someone was looking for software hosting and, you know, they were told, well, GitHub is bad because they're not free, then, you know, where do you go to find out where the right yes. places are? You know, um, no, but- so it is good a good list to have. All you need to do is just get Jonathan Bacon to read this uh, this announcement, and uh, he'll sort it all out. Now he's uh, director of community at GitHub. It's it's all it's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. So we're going to have a bug number one on GitHub. 
It's like, <laughs> <laughs> GitHub is not open source software. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually like actually nagging Jono about one it. One thing to say about their their criteria, the um, uh, FSF's criteria for these uh, repositories is they're unusually pragmatic about it in that they have different levels of. So, yeah, they've got a, a, a criteria which would make it acceptable, criteria which would make it good enough to recommend, criteria which would make it excellent, and criteria which would give it extra credit. So they don't wow. say it has to have all binary. of this. Yeah, it's not just it has all of right. this and it's brilliant, or don't use it, it's evil. So, you know, it's actually quite nice to see them doing it. That is that kind way. of surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Moving on, Martin, our last news item. Uh, CIA director's personal email has been allegedly hacked. A Twitter user claiming to have hacked into the personal email account of CIA director John Brennan has released a contact list of uh, 2,600 or so email and instant messaging message addresses, Mm -hmm. including information for top intelligence and national security officials. Mm. And um, I'm just wondering when they're going to start pressing charges against uh, John Brennan for uh, leaking all of this information because um, there's somebody else, Edward Snowden, who uh, is being pursued by the authorities for leaking data. He did it deliberately, but I'm won- wondering what the dividing line between deliberate, well, you- deliberate leaking and incompetence is. And, uh, <laughs> well, Brennan did leak because he sent emails to his AOL account. So, exactly. I mean, it does exactly. This is my the point. At the time. Well, no, because, oh. I mean, it is intentional. He intentionally forwarded mail to his AOL account so he could yeah. you know, read it offline mm. at home or whatever. So that is intentional, just as, as yeah. intentional as Ed Snowden, you know, mm. releasing stuff to a newspaper. Mm. In fact, even less good because Ed Snowden redacted. Did it without them. <laughs> <laughs> redacted, like, personal details <laughs> so that it wouldn't compromise people in the field. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. John Brennan didn't. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's There's... Clever people sat in labs somewhere working on all of this advanced, you know, cryptography and code breaking technology, gently banging their head against the wall, you know, thinking, and this is the man that leads us. Yeah. All it takes is a laptop left on a train or, you know, (laughs) someone with an AOL account, then you're. Yeah, yeah. Who needs encryption anyway when you've got AOL? Am I right in understanding that he did it through um, social engineering? Rang up the guy's ISP or something yes. and convinced them. Yeah, to... they rang. He rang up one one company in order to, uh, in order to get his, the last four digits of his credit card, <laughs> and then used that as authentication for another company to prove who he was wow. in order to reset the password on his email account. Amazing. Yeah, and apparently he was uh, quite a young guy, and from the I think it was Wall Street Journal article said he was stoned at the time <laughs> no. when he was doing it. <laughs> so it's like some stoner kid can get into your email. You know, you're having a bad day. Right, I think that's... Is that the end of the news? Right, now it's time for some community news and events. And first up, 11 years ago, when we should have been recording, uh, Ubuntu 4.10 was released. Ooh, wait, wait, we should have been recording ago. 11 years ago? <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> wait, what? we probably should have been recording 11 years ago. <laughs> Although, uh, or yeah, Tuesday. I'm not sure the technology was there to support this <laughs> mechanism of recording. But yeah, 11 years of Ubuntu. Wow. Mm. Mm. I remember it well. well. Yeah. It, it, it's funny how the you know you go you look back and and see you know it's an announcement from Mark, you know about releasing the Warty Warthog and uh, mm. you know the software selection that was made at the time and you know it's not it's not a whole lot different now mm-hmm. you know there's one email client one browser one terminal you know the, the same kind of selection of applications yeah um, but it's amazing how it's you know, still there 11 years later, yeah. Yeah. still rocking on. <laughs> that was the first version of Ubuntu that I used as well. Um, yeah, I think I only I, used it on a live CD. I remember the really weird screensaver with a warthog bouncing up and down. Really? I don't remember that. I don't remember that, no. What was the one after Warty? Breezy. I think that's I think, the one we installed. Yeah, yeah, I think so. No, it was H- Hori. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I forgot about that one. I'm not sure if I used that Warty, one. Warty, Hori, Breezy... Yeah, dapper. I think it was breezy. Oh my gosh, edgy, feisty. 
<laughs> Sleepy dot bashful. Let's move. Let's move on. We'll monkey, have a whole monkey. podcast of just yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, today, eleven years later, Ubuntu fifteen ten was released along with Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu GNOME, Ubuntu Chillin, Ubuntu Mate, woohoo, <laughs> Ubuntu Studio, and Zubuntu. Whew, so that's, that's how the family of of, of yeah, it's a lot of Ubuntu. So in 11 years, that's not bad, is it? And, you know, we've not mentioned Edge Ubuntu and all of the cloudy cloud and server stuff that Ubuntu are doing now. And phone. Yeah, so there's if you include the others, like, uh, you know, the Mythbuntu and... Uh, oh, Mythbuntu's uh, missing Ubuntu that Ubuntu yeah. server and, and a couple of others. You probably clock up to 11 derivatives <laughs> of Ubuntu yeah, in 11 yeah. years. That's not bad going. Uh. And uh, there's a separate release announcement for each of those derivatives. I notice you've linked. We'll put those in the show notes so, you know, you can go and find your favorite uh, derivative and see what the update notes say. Cool. Yeah. Next um, up. Moz- uh, yeah, sorry, Mark, go on. You go. <laughs> Mozilla has announced their plan to drop NP API support for everything but Flash at the end of 2016. So NP API is the Netscape plugin API for web browsers so this is what all of the all of the um plugins you know and love such as flash and java and um i know real media and so on that's the api they used to when you say no and love <laughs> and then listed the three most hated plugins <laughs> you, you might say that i flash, thought that ahead of time plug. but i couldn't possibly comment <laughs> <laughs> so how does this relate to ubuntu what's uh what's what's interesting there for ubuntu people um well flash already yeah. sucks on ubuntu no, the, the, the issue here is is that with 16.04 around the corner, yeah. it's whether Ubuntu should drop it, drop the support now, because it's going to be a five-year support oh, release. Yeah. Right, so you don't want to release 16.04 and then find Mozilla drop support for MPAPI while we've got a version out there in the field that does support MPAPI. Exactly. So you have so. to support oh, it yeah. for five right. years, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Well, we'll see what happens there, what decision gets made. Um, A small book has uh, been created um, to help others understand the things behind the surface of the BQ Aquarius E4.5. So uh, it was... um, this was created by uh, one of the community members who hangs out on the Ubuntu phone mailing list, and he created just this big plain text file on his web host with all his random notes that he'd taken about, you know, how to do things with the phone, like internal stuff, like, you know, installing packages and which files to touch to do, like, geeky stuff. Um, and a couple of people suggested that he turn it into a, a, a kind of book. Um, and so uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, but it's on gitbook.com. And it's got, you know, a, a more easily formatted, a more easily um, um, readable, but also easier to contribute to Ooh, um, cool. book about the 4.5. Oh. So, you know, potentially people could add details about the E5 and the MX4 and other devices when they come out. If there are any subtle differences between one and another, people can contribute to that. And we've got a, you know, a community maintained book about the internals of the Ubuntu phone, nice. which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, Find a task is the Ubuntu community's job board for volunteers. Oh, and yeah, yeah. So is this if if people want to find out how they can contribute? This is a list of things they can do. Yeah, it's been around for a while, and um, oh. I think uh, the uh, blog post is really there to kind of remind people about yeah. it and say, you know, remember to point people at this because. You know, often we get people ask us a question: How can I contribute? What can yeah. I do? This is cool. It's and the like, oh, is just go there. Yes, I was going to say <laughs> this is this looks like the one that Mozilla have, and then it says in the corner that it's powered by Mozilla Ask Not. Ah, oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, because <laughs> Mozilla have a thing which you say, you know, it says, "Are you interested in JavaScript? Are you interested in Firefox plugins?" And then you just keep going until you see something you're interested in, and this is a similar kind of thing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's worth worth pointing people to. We should we should have like a button like a find a task button that we can put on the side of the website. Maybe we should uh, get in touch with the, uh, I think it's Ian who created that site yeah. and uh, see if we can link to it from other places. Cause I think one of the problems is if you don't know that that thing exists, yeah. you, know, you, you know, it's difficult to know where to start. It's an unknown unknown. So, you know, it'd be good to point people out that I think. Yeah. Cool. Richard Collins, Richard Collins from Canonical has blogged about the path to convergence. <laughs> 
Sounds very grim. What does that yeah. mean then? <laughs> what is the path to convergence? Uh, well, it's you know paved with gold. And, uh, good intentions, <laughs> yeah, tables and like dirt and you know all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a blog post just outlining you know where we are and where we're going oh, with cool. uh, with convergence on Ubuntu. It's uh, kind of uh, Richard Collins uh, is one of the product managers for the Ubuntu phone, so that's the context with which uh, you should read this. Okay, cool. And finally, um, Mark Shotterworth. Yeah has posted to tell us that the next LTS release of Ubuntu is going to be called the Xenial Xerus. We're running out of the letters, what, what? aren't we? Yeah, but Friendly we never squirrel. had an A. It's true. It's so, yeah, or yes. a B. Z- oh, you had a B, but it's out of order, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, Xenial Xerus. Uh, Xerus so what, is, is, is a, what does Xenial mean? Xenial what means, Xerus? apparently, good relations between hosts and guests. Which is supposed to be some sort of analogy for virtualization, I think. And right. Xerus is a ground squirrel, which lives in communities. Huh. Huh. Interesting. That's funny. Uh, I, I, uh, I saw um, Cassidy from the Elementary OS um, project posted back in May on Tumblr and on Google Plus his prediction, and he said, "I look forward to 1604 Xenial Xerus." So he actually wow. nailed it <laughs> six months ago. He actually figured out what the name would be, and yeah, he was totally right. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Do you think? Um, do you think Mark has them? So he's like got them in sealed envelopes. He came up with them all ad- in advance, like some so sort I know of Darren someone, Brown trick. Someone close to Mark wanted him to choose Xerus for an interesting reason, um. And he did. And I don't know if it's for this reason or not. What was the reason? Are you allowed to tell us? Is well, your job worth it? It's not really family friendly. That's oh, the problem. Okay. Tell us at there are pictures of an animal that looks like this online, which are quite amusing. Okay. Um, and if you can find those, uh, yeah, don't bother sending them to us because I've seen them. <laughs> uh, but, but I don't know if it's the Xerus or something like the Xerus. But yeah, there's an amusing photo. And I, it's just quite funny that someone showed that to me months ago and said, ah, we should get Mark to choose that as the animal. <laughs> turns out he did. <laughs> so I don't know if that, that was coercion or whether he just coincidence or right. yeah, the fact that there's not that many animals left in the world beginning with X. <laughs> and um, I was working on the release today and – or almost immediately after the Wiley release was out, the Xenial archives opened and everything started on 1604 already. Wow. So awesome. there's no delay, no pause for breath. It was flip the switch and everything started importing into Xenial. Wow. And speaking of no pause yeah, for breath, cool. we have some events. Yes. Go for it. Og Camp is happening on October the 31st Yahoo! and November the 1st at Liverpool John Moores University. That's in a week, two weeks? Oh dear, just over a week. It's a week, yeah. And Road we trip. have some sponsors to tell you about. Hooray. So the platinum sponsor this year is Entroware. Woo-hoo. We've heard of them. We have heard of them. We know them. They're a new Liverpool company who sell Ubuntu laptops, desktops and servers. They've also donated one of their laptops worth £600 to the raffle. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So these we we reviewed some Entroware hardware, including one of their laptops, um, earlier this year. So if you want to know more about their hardware, listen to us talk about it. And I happen to know that the laptop in question is an as yet unreleased model, Ooh. so it's brand new. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And they're going to be exhibiting, oh, and they're going to have some of their other new devices. Uh, available, including some equipped with the latest Skylake processors, I believe. Oh, wow. Those would be nice. And done. So what other sponsors have we got? Uh, Well, gold sponsor, Ubuntu, via the community. Hooray. Yay. Is Yay. That, this is the community fund that yep. you contribute yeah. to as an Ubuntu user? Yeah. So people who download the ISO image or just click the donate button, um, yeah, that money gets uh, allocated to various community things. Like we send people to events and uh, uh, sponsor events and that kind of stuff. And one of the things we sponsor is Ocamp. Cool. So, yes. Hooray. Ubuntu users are sponsoring yes. Ocamp. And also Fedora are sponsoring Ocamp. Isn't that great? Have some sort really? of... Uh, bun yes. fight. Yeah. Bun fight. Excellent. I mean collaboration. Yes. That's what you mean. Open source loving. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. That's the first it time we've been sponsored by Fedora, I think. Uh, I think so. They did sponsor one of the previous ones, sort of. <laughs> okay. Sort of. But it's great that they're yes, sponsoring us it again. Is awesome. That's yes. awesome. Cool. And I okay. So we'll see you yes. there in uh uh, if if you're listening to this at the right time, we'll see you there in a week or so. Yes. Uh, if not, then we might have just seen it was you good there. to see you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, nice to see you. Yes, I hope everything went well. Oh, hold on, wait, no. Oh, yes, yeah. So if you're listening to just, I'm going to shut up now. It's all right. We've yeah, done it. Let's go. Uh, moving on. It's uh, one other event to mention, uh, which yeah. is somewhat time sensitive. Tell us about this, Martin. Um, so Joe Ressington is organising a meetup, a podcasters meetup on November, uh, Thursday, November the 12th at the Mulberry Bush pub near Waterloo Station in London. And the reason for this meetup is that Scott, I think it's Newman or Newnan or something like that, but Scott from Mintcast is in the UK and he was earlier in the year and there was an ad hoc meetup put together. And uh, he's coming back again, and this is a follow-up event, uh, much like the first one. So the idea is is that um, if you're a listener of Minkcast or if you're a podcaster, to get together, um, have a bit of a chat, and try and record a podcast in a very noisy pub. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly? I'm sure go Joe will wrong. bring plenty of soundproofing. <laughs> <laughs> he did remarkably well on the last one to be fair it was pretty epic awesome excellent i think that's all the news community news and events we love getting your feedback so please send it to us even the pointlessly mean stuff makes us laugh a little bit if it's short tweet us on at ubuntu podcast if it's less short but please no essays email us on show at ubuntu podcast.org or you can leave a comment on the relevant show notes on our website, ubuntupodcast.org. That's all for episode 33. We'll be back next week when we'll be discussing my new Steam controller and we'll bring you some command line love. Wow, that flew by. It yes, it yeah. did. What's, what's going on? Should me- Was that like 10 minutes or something? <laughs> we were super focused, yeah. super focused. Just Good the, job, team. Yeah, bumper we, news. We should probably mention that we do have a new subreddit called ubuntu podcast oh we'll i've the made the notes, first post in the subreddit today Yay. <laughs> yeah. all right we'll see you all next week bye, bye. bye.